Well, here in the studio we have Bernard Jenkin, Chairman of the uh, Constitutional Affairs Select Committee, Stella Creasy, Labour MP for Walthamstow, and the Daily Telegraph's Laura Hughes, who's been writing about this for quite a while. But we have some late news on this, and Nick Watt is with us. So, Nick, you were holding the uh, front page of The Sun there. Yes, yeah, so The Sun is reporting that Michael Fallon, who is the Defence Secretary, has admitted that he inappropriately touched a female journalist, that is Julia Hartley Brewer, the radio presenter, it is important to say that this happened 15 years ago and they both consider the matter closed. A spokesman for Michael Fallon said he'd apologise when the incident happened 15 years ago and that both he and Julia now consider it closed. And uh, a friend of Michael Fallon is saying that they're good friends, he overstepped the mark when he put his hand on her knee, she made clear it was unwelcome and he apologised immediately 15 years ago. And obviously this came about because Julia Hartley Brewer did a tweet, quite a lengthy statement today, in which she mentioned this incident, didn't mention who the minister was. Yeah, she said she, she said, wasn't mentioning the name because she didn't think it was she serious thought it was enough. She a closed matter and she said, I actually regarded it as mildly amusing. Before we get into the gen thanks Nick, before we get into the generalities, let me just ask about reaction to that particular story. Um, Bernard, you've heard some of the context there. What do you think as you read right, that My immediate topic? reaction is having read Julia's comment <clears throat> where she makes a distinction between what might be proper harassment. She does not consider that this was harassment. Uh, she regards it as an inappropriately flirtatious moment. Uh, and that's the end of it. And let's be clear, clear, the more serious issues that are being discussed are where people have wanted to complain, have felt unable to complain or have complained and legitimate complaints have not been dealt with. That is not in that category. And I think that also tells us that um, we're in a bit of a media storm now where sort of anything is going to generate a headline, uh, right. however... Can however trivial, and I don't suggest that that is completely trivial, but it's obviously much less important than this other stuff. And Stella Creasy, do you agree with that interpretation on what you know about this specific case? I think this is the challenge with all of this, though, Evan. I am not the person who should be making a judgement on this. What we need are processes where professionals deal with or allegations Julia and Brewer. complaints. I mean, I mean, and, she... and, the, and the people involved have the right themselves to say what's happened. But it's not... I, like, this is one of the problems, okay. is this kind of speculation. Right. But Julia wasn't going to complain to anybody about that, and she's made it clear she would never have complained to anybody about that. So it do, I, I agree we need professional... Yeah, I don't, a, a professional I, I system I don't think this is particularly have. helpful, frankly. We no, know exactly. that there are a series of complaints. We know there's a series of concerns, and we should talk about how we're going to address right. that rather so than that, individual that, cases. Which is why we got you yeah. in, but First, let me then come to Laura, because you've been working on this quite a time, um, Laura, before Harvey Weinstein brought it all into the public, uh, public attention. How big a problem is it in Westminster? And is it a bigger problem in Westminster than it is everywhere else in society? Look, I think you need to look at Parliament as 650 small businesses without an HR department. If you had 650 small businesses in the real world, of course, you would have a handful of bad employers who acted inappropriately. I'd like to make it really clear, I've been looking into MPs for a very long time and talking to lots of staff. It's a handful, a large handful. Is that what you're saying, a handful? I don't think it's... 10%, I think 15%? I, I've been working with some really good MPs who have been determined to help expose this. And what I've been looking into, as Bernard was just talking about, is serious cases. I've spoken to women who went to the parliamentary authorities and said to them, I have been sexually assaulted by one of your MPs. What are you going to do about it? And they were told, there is nothing we can do about it. So that's where you, in, in a way, where the scandal is, because you're... Yes, you, yeah. the, the, the scandal is that there is nothing to protect young people. I'm 25 myself, so the reason I started looking into this is because I got to know lots of researchers and staff. And it's not just a sexual harassment issue, it's also bullying. It's also unreasonable expectations put on very young people who have bullying no Bullying of men HR. and women, bullying and men Absolutely, and women. Absolutely, this is not just Tory men and young females, this is every gender, every party, and it's going at all different angles here. And we need to really be looking at actually the cases where serious sexual assault allegations have been made and they have been ignored. To me, that is, that is absolutely extraordinary in 2017. Mm. Let's turn to our MPs. Mm. Bernard, how on earth has Parliament allowed this to persist? I mean, you don't need Harvey Weinstein to tell you that this... The Harvey Weinstein case to come along to tell you this is, this is rubbish, can't be... Well, I think system. it is particularly difficult to regulate Parliament because, uh, as individuals and as an institution, uh, 
we are sovereign, we have to have particular immunities and privileges and independence uh, in order to fulfil our constitutional function. And also, you don't, need to build, you don't have to grow people to fulfil. No, 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 I'm not no, excusing you need, that. You don't I'm need not, forgiveness no, no. for. Or, or, no. you, of course, you. you no, I'm not you, excusing that. I'm just saying why it is difficult to regulate Parliament. But also, Parliament tends to be um, behind what is happening in other corporations and in other other public institutions. Other public institutions, dare I say, the BBC have had their difficulties with this so. sort of thing, and uh, are catching up. Um, we've got our bit of catching up to do too. Stella, you must feel annoyed. Nothing's been done. Why didn't? Why is it not been done? Why didn't you raise this? I mean, whoa. whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> no, no, <but laughs> okay. I mean, that's you don't know that we haven't raised things. I think it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that when you're dealing with people who are in positions of power, taking powerful decisions, questions about imbalances of power and what that leads people to do. It's all about professionalism, right. ultimately. Laura is right. You've got 650 uh, small businesses without a HR function. A lot of people who maybe haven't had experience of managing people and what is appropriate, what is inappropriate. I would also say it's not just about Parliament. It is about our political culture. Look, frankly, it's about a lot of the people who work in politics are maybe people who want to go on to positions, whether they're journalists, whether they're researchers, whether they're working right. in think tanks, whatever. The idea of speaking out on somebody, I thought Harriet put it brilliantly today. She said any woman or or indeed, young man who did that will know for the rest of their career that is something that's, that's associated yeah, with them. They remember for. Can I make, can I make mm, one common. point quickly? Is I think what's really important, and what lots of young people, and actually just any age, say to me who work for an MP, is that when we're looking at putting in a new HR structure, it has to be independent of the party. Well, that's the point. If you're young, <laughs> yeah. you're not going to complain. But, but, but Bernard, Bernard, Bernard has made the point. Really Parliament is sovereign, so Parliament no. always yeah, has but, to right, be able but, to... But also, look, one of the really important things, absolutely, where you've got criminal matters, they need to be investigated. But we're also talking about a culture which is essentially what you'd call constructive dismissal, because it is intolerable for anybody to work in an environment where you are but being bullied, thing. harassed, where it's misogynistic behaviour, homophobic behaviour. But I can be sacked and actually, if I do that here. Absolutely. I can be sacked. Yeah, but the only, people who can, <laughs> the only people who can sack you are the people who appointed you, yeah. who are the voters. So can you sack an MP, yeah, well, Bernard, there, because there, they there behave are really badly? go beyond the pale. And there are, I mean, there are sanctions against MPs which effectively would amount to sacking. And, and we've talked about possibly having recall. Yes, come right. on. It's uh, time recall. Recall would, but the recall point would is, be an idea. But the point is, it's time we have recall. this thing called a code of conduct. We wouldn't be having this conversation if this conduct, code of conduct worked. And yeah, when you say, have, the problem, well, isn't it? But when you say, have we called this out before? The committee I chair actually submitted evidence to the review of this code, saying we need to have a complete rethink because there's tons in here about lobbying and financial interests and and uh, conflicts of interest and all that. There's a whole, there's a little bit at the beginning about the principles of public life, but virtually nothing about how we should discuss right. that, how we should develop people's professional yeah. competencies as employers, what that kind, kind of, of leaders, what kind of leaders we should be seeking to develop. No, no, I know, but, 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 yeah. but all we all stuff. know, and we don't need to read a code of conduct to know that groping yeah. is not acceptable well, exactly. of, of, but, of a but, junior. But, so but that also, look, one of the worries I had today was Andrea Lesden talked a lot about things that might be available for victims. There was nothing about what might happen to the perpetrators. Right. So can I, I voted just for ask, recall before, I'd vote for it again could, in this circumstance. Could, would you support recall? Uh, some provision well, in which the voters are told what has happened and given a chance to I mean, re-vote on that's, that. That's one piece of the armoury we might deploy in order to deal with this. But it sounds but actually, like the, the, the constitution... The point, no, the, but the point is... It's the voters who a, appoint you. But there's a point is there's a huge amount of confusion about values, principles, rules, sanctions. It needs a, a complete rethink. Is there confusion um, still? Uh, as, it has, as there has been a complete rethink in many other walks of life, but not in Parliament. Is there confusion? I think if you're confused about whether it's appropriate to put oh, your hand on, on the knee of somebody, no. I there's think a it's problem. The, the rules I think there confused. is an issue as well with constructive dismissal and how we make sure it's a professional working environment. There need to be sanctions as well, and what right. we didn't hear today were sanctions. So, so the rules are confusing. Exactly. Because actually, if you look at that code of conduct and you look at the respect policy, it covers yeah. the relationships between house staff, so someone yeah. that might work in the right. kitchens or guard the doors. Yeah. But it not the, the research. It doesn't deal with the relationship between an MP and their staffer. And actually, it says that, you know, a complaint that you might make about an MP would be considered a part of that MP's personal life. Right. Yeah, well, that's Bern hopeless. Bernard, one interesting thing that comes out of this is that the whips have been the, the, the kind of the, the go to people. You're, 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 you're assaulted by well, your, your boss. You go to the whips, who are well, the most I mean, cynical th but, people. But this was so one of the reasons why there was pushback in our party against a so-called independent mediation service because actually it was proposed that the whips 
and party volunteers should be the mediators, including, incidentally, a, a somebody from Conservative Future, and look what they turned into turned out to be like. So, if we're going to have an independent mediation service and a, the whips and a system can't of calling, can the whips it's, cannot do it. No, okay, so we, we, and Stella, you agree with that? We need independent reporting. We need third-party reporting. I want it done by professionals who have experience of dealing with people I who've totally experienced sexual that. harassment okay. or so misogyny. Yeah, a degree of agreement. Okay, we'll, we'll end on that note. Thank you all. Great.